Hey Villa fam, welcome to season three of Honest Conversations with Two Village Girls. I'm Serena. And I'm Angie. This season, we are focusing on all of the common questions we've been asked about specific child behaviors. This week, we're answering the question, why is my child not listening? Or more commonly in the childcare field, how do you get my child to listen to you because they don't listen at home? All right, kick us off, Angie. So I hear a lot of times kids don't listen or like in a daycare setting or in a school setting, we might hear that, how do you get your child to listen to you because they aren't listening to me? We might hear this from parents, educators, you know, anyone who really worked with children might have encountered a child who doesn't listen before, and we might ask ourselves why. And while there could be a lot of different reasons to why your child isn't listening, and honestly, some of those reasons are even intentional. Sometimes I know that they focus their attention on one thing. So for instance, if they're watching something on YouTube and trying to say something to them, their attention is really, they're focused on whatever they're watching. So they might not even hear what you're saying. Like we do that as adults. So kids do that too. So that could be one reason why your child isn't listening. That's true. That's true. A lot of the the simplest things could be that they're just distracted and they're not intentionally ignoring you. That's so true. Yeah. Another thing we notice with kids that don't listen is that we're giving them too much information at once and it's overwhelming them so like you're saying too much Um, we talked about this a little bit in one of our other episodes but like giving some giving directions to children like like asking them to sit down in class for example I need Mm -hmm. you to sit down and listen but some teachers or some like in different settings the instructions to them could be I need you to sit down and listen because when you listen, you're doing a good job and I'm proud of you. But when you don't listen and when you don't sit down, you don't get this information and I can't help you. What can a kid do with that? Yeah. How do you think their their little minds are are retaining all of that and understanding it? It's just it's like you gave them a whole mouthful of information. <laughs> like they can't. Ugh. It's just a lot for them. They yeah. can't process. Yeah. And but if you tell them, hey, it's time to sit, that's a direct line of information. They don't have to interpret anything. It's like, oh, I heard the word sit, done, Very easy good. enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, we have talked about this in our podcast before. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just, you have to like say what you want specifically to a child for them to listen. Like like Serena was saying, you can't say a lot of things and expect them to follow all of those things because they probably only hurt probably even heard one thing you said if they even heard that they probably didn't even hear anything you said just now because you gave them a mouthful and another thing is like using appropriate language for children like using simple words that children can understand or using simple directions that children are able to follow we talked about that also before Mm -hmm. too I know in some classrooms teachers they go over like rules for the classroom I know you probably have more experience with that, Serena, but a little bit what I know is that you probably go, like the first day of school, you and the kids come up with rules that everybody can follow, the children and the teachers being respectful to each other, keeping the room clean and stuff like that. Yeah, we do a lot of like starter rules to get everyone used to the environment, especially because in the younger ages, this is their first time outside of the home. So Mm -hmm they're coming from diverse backgrounds with different structures, just different lifestyles and bringing them all into the same environment. Mm -hmm. It's finding something that mainstreams for everybody. So that way we're all on the same page. We're all held accountable to the same rules. Um, And it builds a healthy environment for them because then it's like, they know like their expectations coming into school. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a good point about the the different environments because I wanted to talk about how you know if a child is like raised a little different at home and then it, they go to daycare or or school or whatever and mm-hmm. the discipline there at school could be like different from their home discipline which could be like kind of confusing in a way to the child and it gives them a hard time to like really think about like what what am I supposed to be doing like what does my what do my teacher or my parent want from me yeah um, that could be another reason why your child isn't listening because it's different disciplines. And I know in school, we we definitely, definitely have different disciplines than um, you as parents. So 
the biggest like way we create rules mm -hmm. is like a lot of how we create rules is based on wording. So we talked about like giving small, simple directions, time to sit, um, time to stand, that kind of thing. But another thing, like the first example I can think of is like, instead of telling kids don't run, we tell them use their walking feet. Okay. Or instead of saying, stop screaming, don't yell, we say inside voices mm -hmm. um, and like, don't hit, don't kick. We use mm -hmm. gentle hands, gentle feet, because oftentimes kids hear like the, the big thing that kids focus on just because of how their brains process is mm -hmm. the last thing you said. Yeah. So if we're saying don't run, chances are they're processing the word run. Mm -hmm. So that's what they focus on. And, and then there they go. They keep running because in their minds, that's, that's what they understood. That's the word that, that they caught on to. They didn't catch the don't part. The don't part doesn't make a difference. Right. So using walking feet, gentle hands, inside voices, that kind of thing makes those connections for them. Mm -hmm. So that's how we make our rules. And it goes into teaching too. So yeah, that's kind of the difference with um, like child care providers and teachers and things like Mm -hmm. I feel like we use more of a redirection of behavior and like as parents we we do more of discipline so it's kind of different Absolutely. and I feel like if I mean if you know parents learn how to you know re redirect their child's behavior it might make a difference maybe a huge difference to be honest yeah it's all in the approach honestly and obviously like you said we have the teacher approach yeah of course <laughs> and it's a fresh start children tend to be more comfortable around their families than they do around mm -hmm. us as teachers because we're like strangers. Like I'm sure when you started with your kid, mm -hmm. um, with your student, Angie, yeah. it was that different dynamic because the, the kid had to get used to you versus mm -hmm. the parents, which is probably even more difficult considering you were also at home with them since you're a nanny. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was kind of easy. Like he didn't really take long to, you know, warm up to me because I feel as though like he's a, more of an outgoing child so I feel like mm -hmm. he, he's able to make those connections with other people and have that good relationship with me so I feel like we could we had a good like a good little connection but like as far as you know disciplining him while he's home with his parents and his other sibling as well was definitely hard I know I, I talked to you about it before that it's kind of hard to get him to listen sometimes especially like when his parents are here because it's like, well, mommy's here, I can do this. Or mommy said I can do this or stuff like that. Or daddy said I could do this. And it's just like, well, I'm actually in charge here right now, even though your parents are here. So it's, it was, it is kind of difficult with, you know, being a nanny and that type of discipline. But I feel like over time, like I start, you know, learning different ways to approach it. That's all. Yeah. Finding the, the right technique to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, your expectations with him yeah absolutely and that was one thing I want to talk about like a bad relationship with like um kids might not listen because they might have a bad relationship with their teacher with mm -hmm. their with their nanny with their shoot even with their parent they might have a bad relationship with their parents so I don't know I don't think you expect, would expect somebody to listen to you you know if you had a bad relationship with them so yeah. that could be another reason and another big thing, we, we talked about this in like maybe an emotional abuse like topic, but kids have bad days too. And sometimes they just might not be in a mood to listen. And these are the days where you should be more understanding because like we have bad days too. So if you, know you have, if you know you as an adult have a bad day, you should understand that that child is having a bad day too and give him the opportunity to figure out what he wants to do that day. I'm not saying that he gets to you know do whatever he wants that day but you know if the child wants to be alone that day or like do some like painting or some coloring by himself or anything by himself like allow him to have have the opportunity to do that even we talk about from a teacher perspective but even if you're a parent you can probably do the same thing like you guys are just like like just having a bad day towards each other even the parent and the child are having both both of you guys are having a bad day you guys can just take that space apart for a second and then come back when both of you guys are calm and you know talk about it or communicate about um how not listening is you know not respectful and stuff like that and communication makes a big difference when you know raising children absolutely your child you and your child are a team you guys shouldn't be working against each other you guys should be working together 
Mm -hmm. Um, That's why in a childcare setting, we set the expectations and we follow through with everything because those expectations are the difference between a safe environment, a happy environment and like a uncomfortable, sad environment. Mm -hmm. Um, These rules are in place for us to make sure that each child is treated equally and each child is having a positive experience and that they're doing what's intended in a childcare setting. They're okay. learning, they're growing, they're developing. So that's probably a bigger difference. I don't know if like our parents in the Villa fam can like chime in on this later on and let us know is that our structure is different from like a typical household structure, especially for those parents that aren't childcare providers or teachers. Right. But just having those expectations makes a difference in our environment because the children don't know us. Mm -hmm. We do often see limit testing, but we are able to stop that from the beginning because we aren't the parents. We don't tolerate these kinds of things that parents might say, oh, that's cute. Or, um, Mm -hmm. they didn't mean it that way. Or just one thing like we get when we like children are first coming into a center is like children that like to play fight or that like to like play like guns yeah and swords and stuff and that's something we stop when they come into the setting because while we understand that it's a game to them and it's something they might see at home some children from other backgrounds might see this and feel like it's threatening or just dangerous and we transition those children that do those things out of that by giving them these expectations and letting them know that, hey, this is unacceptable and we will not allow this and and give them the option to test us and figure out for themselves that, oh, this is no fun. I'm not enjoying this. It's better for me to do these things because I can do these things with other people, other friends. Mm -hmm. And it keeps me in a good place with my teacher because my teacher is giving me this positive attention when I'm doing all these other things other than playing with these fake guns and swords and stuff Mm -hmm. yeah I feel like the opposite happened to me well not happened to me like but well you guys know I'm a nanny so with like different things like for me I would let let happen so for example I didn't mind Josh eating like playing not playing with his food but I, I didn't mind him like playing with his food while he eat or talking while he eat or things like that but you know, um, his parents would be like, come on, Joshi, hurry up and eat or hurry up and finish and stuff like that. But with me, it's different because I, I really, you can play with your food. You can, that's, if that's what you want to do, you go ahead. As long as you are eating it, then that's fine with me. But that was kind of different, you know, from a nanny perspective. Yeah. And basically we say all this to say children know their expectations mm-hmm. with certain people at certain mm-hmm. times of the day they pick up on that. And if there's inconsistency beyond a certain amount, so um, children know those expectations. So little Josh knows that when Miss Angie is there, he doesn't have to eat super fast and finish his food at a, in a certain time frame. versus when he's at home with mom and dad, he sits there and he's like, oh, I have to finish in the next like 15 minutes because that's what I'm like that's what's expected of me so a lot of like that listening aspect is are we on the same page or not yeah Mm -hmm. which brings us into how do we get children to listen Mm -hmm. a lot of getting children to listen is just seeing eye to eye with them and and letting them be a part of the planning process the rule making process Mm -hmm and the discipline process, making sure that they understand the expectations and what happens when they don't meet the expectations. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing you can do um, to get your child to listen is, you know, getting down to your child's level. Um, Basically what this means is just getting down, making eye contact with your child and um, communicating with them. I'm not saying like yelling at them or screaming at them, but literally sitting there talking to them face to face and this is just if you want trying to get their attention like if they're if they're doing something try to get their attention instead of yelling or across the room like hey such and such do this and um they they probably not even listening to you so instead you go there um, make eye contact and get down to their level and say 
hey, could you do this? Or I want you to do this. Or that's a way that you could get their attention. Yeah, absolutely. The next thing we talk about this a lot. I feel like we talked about this probably every episode is listening to your child. We talk about how the child know what they want. So, or if they do do something wrong, um, communicate with them and listen to them and see why they are doing that specific behavior that they are doing. Absolutely. Which basically ties in thinking about why your child isn't listening. Figure out what the external factors that you may not be observing in your frustration or your just observation. Figure out what it is that's going on with the child Mm -hmm. and what's causing them not to listen. Because like we talked about earlier, sometimes it's unintentional. Sometimes they really just can't hear you. And be patient with the children. It's a process to learn rules and pick up on them. And having implemented these rules, the first few like days might be a little tough, maybe incentivizing it or just giving them like high praise and saying, great job, you used your walking feet today. Great job, I saw that you were nice and used gentle hands with your friends when you played. Mm -hmm. Giving them, or in this case, if it's in the household, I see you use gentle hands with your siblings. Mm -hmm. encourage them to do those positive things and give as little attention to them as possible when they're doing those unwanted things Mm -hmm. and that's a good one because when I was nannying his mom would say that a lot um when he isn't listening she would always say like I like a good listener are you being a good listener and she'll ask some questions like things like that and he'll be like yes I'm being a good listener and you'll just see like like little behavior changes and stuff like that like like I learned from, I learned from them as parents too. So mm-hmm. yeah, that was cool. Oh, yeah. Another way you can get your child to listen is to sit there and explain to them how not listening is disrespectful. When you ignore people intentionally, it's a form of disrespect and we want to respect others. And that's how you would, you know, tell your child or tell your student that disrespect isn't tolerated in a classroom or just isn't tolerated in the household. Yeah, this is one of those emotional things. It's teaching them how to express how they're feeling. That disrespectful part is teaching them that, hey, we wouldn't like it. Like it hurts our feelings when people don't talk to us. Mm -hmm. If we're upset, we tell them we're upset. That way they can either help or they give you your space, but giving them those communication skills instead of ignoring. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I like this next one. Another way to get our children to listen is to bring a little fun into it. Mm-hmm. We can spice things up with different fun sayings, particularly in the teaching field. I do a lot of different little rhymes and different things. So one thing we do in the classroom is we have, um, when we're teaching like reading and stuff, mm-hmm. we have lips the fish. Okay. And we use our lips to sound out words. So we'll say we're, we're being lips the fish. We're sounding out our words. Mm-hmm. Another way to get our kids to try again is that we're trying lions. So we're being trying lions again. We're going to try again. We're doing, we're being trying lions. Mm-hmm. But we have these different little sayings that encourage them. And it's also like fun for them because they're like lips the fish. And they'll tell their friends that and they'll tell the teacher they're being trying lions. They're trying again because something didn't work. Yeah. And it, it becomes a little like fun way to keep going, fun way to learn. Mm-hmm. Yep. This helps encourage the child to be more cooperative, you know, involved in whatever activity you guys doing. It could be cleaning. It could be learning. It could be whatever if you put a little fun into a little play into whatever you guys are doing then the child will like it a little more and they'll be able to pay attention because kids like play they like fun so absolutely here's a little fun tip that all kids love all kids love a race so if you race to clean your house or you race to clean the playroom kids love racing and competitions that's that's what I did Um, (laughs) with Josh he at first it was a little hard to get him to like be motivated about learning or like to learn so it was hard but once I you know turned it into like a competition thing he he enjoyed it and it was more fun it's fun that way actually I love it that way oh yeah (laughs) when they're when the kids are engaged with you it's 
it, it's a great experience. Absolutely. This last thing is really about basically showing the child what you are experiencing when they aren't listening to you. So it's called turning the table. So basically what, what you would do is you would tell your child, explain to them in the beginning that you are going to not listen to them for this time period. Um, it could be a short time. It depends on the age limit or and how you know the child behavior is. So you would do maybe 10, 20 minutes, depending on how your child is and ignore them. But you will only do this just so that they can see how it feels to be ignored by a person that you want to talk to. And it's just a good way to... It's a good way to reiterate that not listening is not respectful. It hurts people's feelings. It makes us feel sad. And it make, it's one of those unwanted things. Like it just kind of puts the shoe on the other foot. Like, oh, now I understand what mommy and daddy feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not listening. Because we all want people to listen to us. Yeah, we do. <laughs> now here are some reasons why your child might not listen to their teachers or nannies or babysitters. First thing is the lack of discipline or the different discipline structures mm -hmm. that they come from, which is why we talked about from a school perspective, we get kids from many different backgrounds and environments. So seeing kids that come from a, a structure where they didn't have discipline mm -hmm. or they had very little, we find that implementing these new structures to them for the first time is difficult because they don't understand why can't I run right now? Why do I have to sit at my chair? Why can't I play fight with my friends? Mm -hmm. um, just because they've never experienced that. Mm -hmm. So just starting off with a new structure for them is often difficult because they're not used to it yet. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I just thought about was like, maybe is the energy from the other kids that they're not listening. Like if other kids aren't listening in the classroom, they're probably like, oh, they're not listening. And maybe I, I should listen too. And of course it can work the other way where it's like everybody's listening and the one child isn't listening. He sees that everybody else is listening. He, he will probably want to listen too because he'll see that the teachers are giving him, the, the children who are listening praise. So he'll want to listen too. So it, it can work both ways. Absolutely. I've seen both sides of that. Yeah. Another thing we talked about was like having a bad day. You know, we talked about this before earlier, but just to quick it, sum it up real quick that, yeah, kids have bad days. Let them deal with it. It, it teaches them problem solving skills as well. Not only teaching them how to deal with their emotions. Also teaching them like social skills with that, having a bad day and having to come in to an environment with a lot of other kids or a different teacher, maybe they just slept bad and they're grumpy from the morning, just having to readjust and reacclimate to, hey, this is like, we're here for you. We're, we're understanding. Here's what we're going to do. But we understand that they have bad days and trying to ease their mind that their bad day doesn't have to be bad the whole day. Mm -hmm. That makes a difference in their, their little minds and their days usually. Yeah, absolutely. And then the final or a final reason why children might not be listening to their teachers, nannies, or sitters is because they might not have a good relationship with them. Listen, this is another listen to your child moment. Is your child going in and they're just like, oh, it's Miss So and such again. It's this person. I don't want to go see this person. Mm -hmm. Like it's a difference when they say it like once just because they're like being sassy. Yeah. But if they constantly are like avoiding the teachers or avoiding the providers, like during pickups and drop-offs and stuff, your child is communicating something to you. So this is where you listen to your child, especially if usually when you get those children that are avoidant of the providers and the teachers, mm -hmm. typically those teachers and providers are also giving you negative reports on your child. So it's like a two-way street They're If they're both like butting heads that's a sign that maybe this just isn't the right person for your um, child mm -hmm. nothing against the teacher it's not personal we, you got to do what's best for your kid so that's all guys so thanks for tuning in again to another episode with two village girls please subscribe to our channel if you are new if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comments below also go ahead and hit that bell to get notified when new videos drop 
Please follow us on all our social medias, which will be listed in the description box below. As always, we want to send you out with some positive vibes to get you through the rest of your week. This week's inspirational quote is by Robert Rugum, who says, don't worry that children never listen to you. Worry that they are always watching you. Thanks, Philip. Bye. Bye.